You're with Gusto and as part three of my 10 part ME chili challenge, I am going to consume a jalapeno pepper. This is 20,000 Scovilles and it is one more step on my way to the Carolina Reaper, which weighs in at 100 times hotter than this, 2 million Scovilles. Before I chomp down on this though, first allow me to guide you through this really sucky journey that ME has taken me on, kicking and screaming. I remember the first encounter I had with ME. It was, I don't know, when I was 12 or 13 years old and I overheard my parents talking about a friend down the road who'd just been diagnosed with chronic fatigue syndrome. That's a shame, I thought. And I went on with my life, really not giving it another thought. Fast forward to September 2008. I just married my high school sweetheart Kim. We bought a house and our careers were going places. I was young and I was ambitious. I was determined to succeed. Working five days a week at one of the world's biggest multinational corporations as a management accountant while studying every Sunday to get my CPA qualification. At the same time, I was working with a friend overseas to try and start a website that we had a lot of passion for. So essentially I was working six days a week. Then the global financial crisis hit. So almost everything there completely wiped out and the NASDAQ, everything and more has been completely wiped out. The Dow traders are standing there watching in amazement and I don't blame them. Economies crashed and my company was hit especially hard. As a result of downsizing, my small team of three was slashed to two. Consequently, my work doubled overnight. I was under a lot of stress and during that time, my boss happened to come in while he was supposed to be off with the flu because he had to submit an important piece of work. My desk being right next to his, I came down with the same flu. But there was one big difference. He got better and I felt like I never did. I knew something was wrong with me, but I couldn't figure out what. I figured maybe I'm drinking too much, so I went dry for the entire month of October. Didn't help. By November, I was visiting doctors asking, how come I haven't gotten better from a flu that I got two months ago? Without really listening to my concerns, they all told me similar things. It was stress, it was diet, perhaps depression. But I knew it wasn't any of those things. I'd been under a lot of stress before, I had a relatively healthy diet, and I wasn't blue. I just had no energy all the time. And there were bills to pay, so I had to keep working. Through 2009, my energy got worse and worse. I was dragging myself out of bed to go to work, taking constant doses of ibuprofen at my desk just to stave off the constant pain racking my body and brain. Naturally, the quality of my work began slipping and my boss told me that if it didn't improve, I'd be out of a job. The trouble was I just couldn't justify what I knew to be true. Something was seriously wrong with my health, but I couldn't prove it. By the end of 2009, I'd work all week and I would sleep all weekend. I didn't even have the energy to assist my kind wife with basic tasks like the grocery shopping. I vividly recall a particular moment when I was in the kitchen chatting with Kim and I was going to refill my water glass. And without any prompting or apparent reason, I just burst into tears. I couldn't articulate it at the time, but the fact was I was a broken man. Left with no other alternative, I quit work in January of 2010. 10 weeks later, I finally received the diagnosis. Post-infection fatigue syndrome, another name for MECFS. At that point, it wasn't even a surprise, more of a relief. Initially, we expected it might take six months, maybe even a year to recover. My immunologist sent me to a clinic that specialised in ME recovery known as the UNSW Lifestyle Clinic. The clinic prescribed a regimen of essentially three things. Activity pacing, cognitive behavioural therapy and graded exercise therapy. Known as PACE, these were the best research supported methods of recovery for people with my condition. With that knowledge, I threw myself into the program. I'm a naturally motivated individual. I got my first job at the age of 15. I had recovered from near death at age 16 when my digestive system stopped working for several weeks. Here I am weighing 45 kilograms after my release from hospital. When the guy took his clothes off and posed for me, 
he looked like nothing. And here I am 12 years later at full fitness on my honeymoon. I graduated from a top Australian university. I've achieved a green belt in Jiu Jitsu, twice. I'm qualified to instruct snowboarding. And I even managed to complete my CPA despite being unwell. My point is that I knew that with my work ethic, I would recover. Despite my determination though, my condition wasn't actually improving, only my management of symptoms. But the clinic's advice was to keep gradually pushing my boundaries upwards and eventually my body would adjust. So I did, until May 2011. I'd pushed myself all weekend and then experienced a monumental crash. My symptoms suddenly spiked from mild to severe. I was completely mute because of severe laryngitis. I couldn't cook or help with chores because I was under soul crushing lethargy and constant pounding headaches. All the energy I had was spent on showering and even then I could only do that every second day. This went on for two long months. It was one of the most difficult times of my life, both for me and my wife who had no tools with which to help me. Following that horrific two months, I was gradually able to increase my activity levels. But what was previously a mild case of ME was now a moderate case. Previously, I was able to leave the house around four days a week. Now I could only do that for two days a week. And even then I couldn't stay out as long. The family doctor believed I had depression. So I took antidepressants for five months and that made me feel somehow worse. He also referred me to a psychiatrist who it turned out didn't believe that ME was physiological in nature, rather psychological. So that ended up being a giant waste of time, money and energy, while also leaving me distrustful of the psychology field. My symptoms and my life remained arduous. By 2014, I'd been sick for five years and despite my best efforts to remain strong and positive, my resilience had withered down without me really being conscious of it. I slowly withdrew from social activities that I knew would drain me so that I could focus on my graded exercise therapy. That's what science had promised would cure me. Well, in January 2015, Kim finally walked out on me. Mm, what you say? Mm, that you only meant well, well, cause you did. She'd married me seven years earlier when we were planning to have a life and a family together. But now I was merely a husk of my former self. We simply couldn't agree on the issue of how to care for a child if I needed a level of care myself. I believed it could be done, but the difference couldn't be settled. It happened to emerge that same year that the PACE trial, the one that I put all my faith in for a recovery, was horribly exaggerated to the point that researchers were able to classify patients as recovered despite zero change in their actual condition. Today in 2017, the study still has yet to be retracted, but demands continue to grow louder. Most recently in an open letter signed by over 100 scientists, clinicians, expert and patient groups. I am one of the patients harmed by the PACE study, but I want to be careful to stress that I don't want to throw out the baby with the bathwater because I still think it's very useful for management of the symptoms. It just should never have been pitched as a cure. And here we are today. I decided to use the heartbreak of my divorce and the frustration of a life half lived to push for a cure for ME. If a moderate case of ME has destroyed my life in the space of seven years, imagine how severely affected patients must feel. Remember too that stories like mine are being played out a million times over in the US, 180,000 times over in Australia and so on around the world. And that's again why I'm going to challenge the following celebrities to take the ME Chili Challenge. Sure. Do you believe, believe, believe. Emma Blackery. He was finally diagnosed with chronic fatigue syndrome. Morgan Fairchild. It's because Morgan Fairchild has had this disease. And Stuart Murdoch. There's not even a, a bit of paper that says I have ME. You can hit those guys up on Twitter using the hashtag below. And of course, feel free to donate, like, comment, or subscribe. And now I'm gonna eat a jalapeno. Um, it's, a, it's very hot. Oh, okay. 
There's a lot of spice filling the back of my mouth. Man, it's making me cry. Oh my God. It burns. It's definitely burning. My tongue's burning. Ah. Uh, my face feels quite warm. Mm. All right, guys, there you go. Oh, jalapeno pepper. Oh my God. <laughs> oh my God, it's so hot. It burns, Mocha. Thanks for watching and join me next time for the way in which ME is labeled and diagnosed. <coughs> And this is Mocha, he was missing for two years and was returned to me. So that's good news. My life isn't all bad. <laughs> you bastard.